I walked out her womb, poised for pain, misunderstood, unwanted, haunted by her misery, mentally poisoned by her history, corrupted, her story interrupted, her violations visited me, and soon I understood that those things that stifled her would silence me. My innocence, a price for her absence. Alone, I prayed undercover. I was preyed upon under covers, sins uncovered, a stain I splintered. Because sometimes the eye of the needle gives when the camel can't. So the needle gave, but I couldn't, and she wouldn't. And so she found salvation at the sharpest point of a needle. Her needing salvation, me disappointed, fingers pointed, her shame, my shadow. She offered no shelter. My dreams filled with her screams. I only knew the outlines of her face. I struggled to erase what I heard, a puzzle. The memories of those other ones fell by the wayside. I held that pain inside and no one noticed me. Instead of growing, I was shrinking. Instead of glowing, I was dimly drawn on pages that were written in disappearing ink. She, my only link to us, my only link to them. She, unknowing, disappeared, thinking that she was the weakest link. Weakened, she might think, but she was what I needed to fill in the blank spaces, the unblended blemishes in places darkened by disappointment. Disconnected, the link disintegrated. Her distance read like disinterest. Me, unable to translate that she had been destroyed by her demons. And what looked like abandonment was her way of saying, saying, of chasing away her pain, of slaying dragons who haunted her in her sleep. What looked like weakness was her way of keeping poison at bay, and in her mind, to leave was the only way she could stay afloat. I didn't choose her. She didn't lose me. I didn't lose her. She couldn't choose me. We didn't choose this. But somehow lost we, we lost us. I fed off of her sorrows. She breastfed me tears and I swallowed whole, thinking that mother's milk was nourishment for my soul. I suckled for dear life. My hunger unsatisfied, she hungered for an endeared life. But a baby hung from her breast like a beast. Her burden multiplied and she hungered to be unburdened. She lived like a beast, hungry for satisfaction. Her mother's milk dripped like blood. Her burdens hung and nourished her pain. She ran faster thinking she could escape my cries, but my voice rang in her ears and choked the soul from her eyes. She loved me, but hated her. But no one ever told me that version. I hated her, but loved me. I loved her, but hated me. I was choking. My soul was hidden from their eyes. I learned to smile on cue. Dance for approval, make myself small, and sit in the corners while she danced on cue and smiled on corners, soliciting what satisfaction she could find in their hands. Their hands applauded me, 
pushing me to forget about her. So I obliged on the outside. But inside, I held tightly to who I thought she could be, even when I wouldn't let her inside. I pushed her away and she obliged because it felt safer for her outside and she could hold tightly to who she had to be. But inside, she cried and wished she hadn't handed me over to others, that she hadn't ran away, that she had known how to be hurt but give love. She didn't know that you could heal even if you cried, that you could be splinter and hold those things tightly to you, that mother sounds like matter, that if you are a mother, you matter, that babies don't judge, that children don't care, that mother's love is a balm for broken things. She didn't know that dragons disintegrate, that holding tightly is the only way to hold on, that love can be a life preserver, that nourishment flows two ways, that living things need love, that tears flow backwards, that time heals all things, that I needed her and she needed me, that to be unwanted yet chosen un would be unwanted yet chosen would be her legacy, that I could grow around the space where my love for her should be, that nothing really mattered but her, them, and me, that her love held power if she let it be. Her story is my story, and her pain is my blood. I suckled her history, and so with each breath, I breathed parts of she that she gave up a long time ago. I remember things that she has never known, and her sorrows pepper my own. She is my mother. And with each beat of her heart, I hunger to suckle, to be nourished, to grow into the us that was interrupted, to discard all that is corrupted and to connect the broken edges into a story of our design. For she is my mother, mine. And so I hope for reconnection, a restoration of our disconnection. I pray for resurrection of something that was destroyed before it could flourish. And so I sit, a reflection of what she hoped but couldn't articulate, a feeling so strong, love, that she couldn't activate. Me, wanting, waiting, wishing. She, wanting waiting, wishing, us, a reflection and thus the resurrection, the rekindling of a connection that began in the womb.